Hello, this is Mark Bobo. Welcome to my podcast over the IT benefits that IUS students receive. A lot of students don't realize the many different services that the IT department offers. This podcast is going to seek to remedy that issue as well as review a few hidden gems that many students don't know about. First up though, we're going to visit the IT website. As you can tell, we're on the IU homepage. Navigation to the IT website can be a little tricky for those first time coming through it. So we'll go ahead and run through steps there. Easiest route on this list is go to A to Z. Select down to the I. And look for Office of Information Technology. As you can tell, the website offers many kind of different links to information. Uh, we're going to look at right now though, under the Get Help section here, is the Knowledge Base. The Knowledge Base is essentially a IT wiki that has guides and troubleshooting. Search for the issue you're having and a guide will pop up. So for example, we're going to search for syncing an iPhone to our IU email account. Okay, as you can tell at IU, how can I read my email on my iPhone, iPod, or iPad? Let's go ahead and check that out. As you see, it pulls up a guide with different routes of how to go through and troubleshoot your issue. Offers you different preparing your email account. It runs you through each individual step on how to set up your account and have it synced up to your iPhone. We're actually going to go back to the home page now. Um, and then we're going to go on next onto the hardware and software deals. So back to the IT page here. Under tech services, we've got software and hardware. Um, if you click that link, it's actually going to pull up a bunch of discounts and offers offerings that I use reach agreement with vendors. Okay. First up, we're going to discuss the hardware. The student hardware section, or the hardware deals section, kind of hidden in here. Um, you got to scroll down a little bit. But the hardware discounts, that's where students can go through uh, vendors like Apple, Dell, Sony, um, many different vendors that allow discounts. So we're going to go ahead and select that link. And it's going to pull up the new page for the hardware discounts. From here, we're going to go, for this example, let's go with Computer Guide Deals by Vendor. And it tells you the different vendors that offer discounts. And each one of these, by clicking their link, will take you to their page. Um, let's use Dell for now. Next page brings up will be just your standard disclaimer saying I use not responsible for anything you do on the Dell page. So we'll go ahead and click Continue to Online External Store. Next up pulls up, as you can see, and it already recognizes that we're a member of the IU system. So just shop to your heart's content. Um, just wear it heads up. It will ask you at some point for your CAS login. That's just your username and school passphrase. So let's go ahead and move on to the next section, which is the one that a lot of people tend to use. To do that, we're going to go back to the IUS main page. We're going to hit back once or twice here get back to the main software and hardware page. Um, something kind of neat is you can actually buy software in physical form from the IUS bookstore at reduced price. And they list all the different prices Prices right here. Um, but the real thing I want to show you is IUWear. This website here, um, you can download software for free actually through agreements IUS has. And as it pulls up, you'll notice we have IUWear and IU Anywhere give a brief explanation of IU Anywhere. It's actually where you can down where you don't have to download the software itself, you can actually stream it from home. For that you just need a Citrix receiver installed. You click it, log in with your username and passphrase. Then it gives you a Citrix app that it wants you to install. Agree to install. Continue, and then it pulls up the menus here. All these different types of programs that you can actually stream directly to your desktop without having to download the files themselves. Saves you a lot of time in terms of downloading. Makes it a lot easier to work from home. 
Um, just a brief explanation of that one. Let's actually go back because I want to show you IUWare itself. So IUWare, go to start downloading. What IUWare is is software that iOS is, IU has agreed with licenses um, with various companies and you can actually download their products for free. Um, so let's go ahead and a common one everybody looks for is Microsoft Office. So let's go with Office Tools. We're going to look for Microsoft Office 2010, which is right here. Okay, next page is going to pull up. This can give you two options, 32-bit um, or 64-bit. Occasionally it will give you only one. Easiest way to check this out is just go to your Start menu, right-click on Computer, and select Properties. That will pull up and it will say what operating system bit you're using currently. When you find the appropriate one, you just select the option. So for this one, we're actually at 32-bit. Pulls you up to this page and tells you the requirements that your computer must have before it allows you to actually, before you can actually use the software. Um, you notice also it's going to prompt us to log in, to verify we're an IU student. As we're waiting. Um, some of these, just a word of warning, do have a certain amount of times you can use each key. Product key down there. Already assigned to my account. Show you how to research that here in a minute as well. Uh, from here, you'll have either one to four different options. Um, selecting this one, you can actually download it in one big batch, just one big file. Other software, for example, the Adobe Creative Suites will have five separate files. To install that, you just select the first file you downloaded after you've downloaded everything and it puts it all together for you. Okay, so let's go ahead and try this. And as you can tell, it's just downloading. So, in terms of product keys, you would just slide down, scroll down, say software requires product key. Obviously, you need one. So you're going to select, there will actually be an option when you first throw it on here, it says request product key. You just hit that, and it'll pop up, display an image similar as below with your product key there. Uh, if you ever download the software and forget the product key, and you don't feel like going here, there's actually a way to check all of your product keys. If you scroll back to the top, you'll notice log out, get support, my product keys. If you select that, any product that you've downloaded or any product that they have available that you would like a product key for is listed below. So for example, I've got Captivate 5.5, I've used that and requested a key, Creative Suites 5 Design Premium. Um, for any of these, we'll say, let's say I request, requ request a key for a 64-bit of Microsoft Office 2010. Accept these terms. Here's the screen I was talking about earlier. Software requires product key, usually enter, get a product key. We select this. As it loads, it pops out our product key. All right, that sums it up for IUWare. Um, just one tidbit: depending on which operating system you're using, you do need to select which tab. PC is obviously Microsoft Windows products. Mac, well, yeah, Linux, both pretty self-explanatory. Okay, we're gonna close this tab and go back to the IU hardware page. And from here, we're gonna access a website that very few students know about. Most faculty and staff don't tend to know about it. Um, under software and tutorials through lynda.com. We're going to select the IT training, lynda.com online training webpage. Link here. And it's going to pop up with this. We just go to go to lynda.com. Okay, it's going to load up the next page, which will bring us to lynda.com homepage. lynda.com is just a tutorial database. It covers programming languages and different software. Anything you're interested, you can learn to your heart's content. For example, let's select a subject here. Let's go with design, since you'll be doing some of that for Infinix Capstone. In design secrets, as you can tell, Illustrator, fashion design, they have all sorts of different kind of training things. 
So let's go with InDesign FX here. So I select this, just for our example here. And it's going to pull up the next page, which as you notice has a bunch of different links. What each of these are, are their miniature videos, just a few minutes long each, covering one particular topic. This is really good if you don't have a whole lot of time to train, but you'd still like to get some kind of training in there, or if you have issues with a particular area of the software, you just select your different area, create long text shadows with a type on a path, for example, and it pulls up a separate window and it displays the video. So as you can see, Lynda.com is quite a useful tool here. Um, definitely not very used, but it's definitely worth utilizing. It can help you keep up to date with the ever-expanding IT field, with all the different programs, programming languages, and design fields. Um, we've got one more thing to show you. Let's go ahead and go back actually to the IUS IT page, which we're going to take further back to the IUS main page. From here, I want to show you box at IU. To access that, we need to first go to on course. So from where I was logged in prior, it automatically took here. Nor took me here. Normally, it would ha prompt you for your username and passphrase. As you can see, we're on the IUS on course, our personal workspace. What we're looking for is box at IU, which is up here in the top right corner. What box is? We're going to select this real quick. What Box is, is a program that lets you store stuff that you can access from any computer regardless. You just log into the account and access your files. So, we just go ahead and hit continue to log in. And depending on whether you've already created a Box account or not, it'll either take you to the account creation process or it'll take you directly to this screen here. From this screen, what you're going to want to do is you go to Upload to upload individual files or folders. As you can see, we've got the two options here. First though, we want to be organized. So under new, I'm going to create a new folder. So this way I can organize things how I like. Since I'm planning to use this at home and don't need necessarily other people using it, I'm going to go to collaboration and I'm going to set it to keep private for now so only I can access it. Since it's going to be for home, we'll just go ahead and name it home and hit create folder. It'll take it a few seconds, but as you can see, it's rather quick. It went ahead and created our folder. So, say we want to add something to this folder. First, we click on it. It pulls us in and shows us, hey, you know, there's nothing here. Why don't you bring something and put it in? So, like I showed you earlier, we're going to go ahead and we're going to hit Upload. In this case, we're going to do an individual file. So, we select Upload Files. Pulled up my H drive by default. So, actually, I am going to look down and I am going to upload an image file. I feel like using background at home for instance. And just hit open. And it uploads our file. It's a smaller file, so it's really quickly. Really quick. Um, you can actually enter comments about the file, give yourself reminders, or if you have it collaboration, you can actually assign it to different members of the collaboration. Um, if you click the file itself, actually if you can see it gives us a little preview already, or if you click it, it brings up a full image. This will do this with Word documents and everything else as well. So we go back to home, all files, so that way we're no longer under our home folder here. And let's say we want to upload a folder. Let's click folders, maximize this a bit, add files. And this one's a little bit trickier because you actually have to navigate. It doesn't by default choose something for you. Let's say Team KTA is going to be our folder. So I'm going to hit Open, Upload, and it shows us our size and location here. Once it finishes, it'll bring up this window here. Uh, it looks like nothing's been done, but if you just go ahead and close this window out, it'll actually pull up your next section. Um, as you can tell, the Team KTA folder is now uploaded and ready to have the files looked at. So if we click on it, you notice, hey, all of our files are here, including the podcast I'm currently making. Alrighty, we go back to all files. Let's go ahead and say, you know, I want to use this, give access to a different user. So let's go ahead and use the home one. I've changed my mind, you know, buddy of mine, I want them to access files I'm working with home. Could be just something, you know, video games, some kind of goofy stuff I'm working with. So, go over here, after we've selected the folder, 
type in the email address. We're going to use another one of my email accounts, just for example. And invite collaborators. As you can tell, it's now loading. Getting ready to take us to the next window. And it sends an email out to the user and says, hey, you know, you've been invited. Here's the information to get in. And that pretty much takes care of that. Uh, IUS in general has your tech fees cover all sorts of good things. This has just been a few of the many examples. Uh, these are the primary ones that I thought most users don't know about that they really should. I hope this has been beneficial to you and you might use this in your informatics capstone or any kind of other class you come across. Best of luck to you. This concludes my podcast. Thanks.